as you can see tyson ten years difference uh, between the two and hurtado seems to have all of the advantages certainly in height and reach you can see them right there three inches in reach now as far as the rules uh, the fight tonight will be contested here under the florida rules of course a ten point must system yes there is a three knockdown rule fighter can't be saved by the bell in any round referee or doctor can stop the fight and the headbutt rule here in florida will go to the cards after the end of the fourth round anytime prior to that it will be ruled a technical draw if the fight had to be stopped all right so we're ready for action here at mikasuki indian gaming pavilion in miami let's go up now for the official particulars of this first battle ladies and, and gentlemen Thomas from Schreiber. the mikasuki indian gaming pavilion america presents and the undisputed undefeated king of beers budweiser proudly present to you fight time on fox let's get the action started we have for you first of all 10 rounds of boxing in the junior welterweight division and when the bell rings the referee in charge of the action will be jorge alonzo introducing to you first fighting to my left out of the red corner he's wearing white trunks with blue lettering and weighed in at 141 and one half pounds hailing from washington dc he has a professional record of 47 wins 10 losses one draw with 24 wins coming by way of knockout ladies and gentlemen please welcome daryl terrible t tyson yeah. And his opponent fighting directly across from him out of the blue corner. He's wearing white trunks with black trim and also weighed in at 141 and one half pounds. Coming to us from Santiago, Cuba, he has a professional record of 26 wins. One loss with 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dios Feliz Hurtado. Once again, your referee in charge, Jorge Alonso, now to give the instructions. Right, Tyson will try to listen up, okay? We gave you the instructions in the dressing room. I want a clean fight. When I call for a break, step back, no punches, no punches after the bell. Protect yourself at all times and obey my commands, okay? Yo te doy las instrucciones, quiero una pelea limpia. Cuando diga break, me da un paso atrás sin tirar golpe y protégete siempre y hazme caso, okay? Token guante, touch gloves. Good luck, gentlemen. God bless you both. All right, here we go now for this 10-round uh, bout, scheduled 10-rounder, and there's the youth that you, a lot of people are talking about All as right, being one of the up. real terrific uh, prospects. He's already uh, proved that uh, in this fight with Pernell Whitaker, in which he nearly won the championship, had Whitaker down twice in that bout. But tonight, the youth faces Let's that go. man who represents certainly experience in this bout, and that is Daryl Tyson. Both of them wearing white trunks here tonight, but it is Hurtado who has the black trim. Daryl Tyson has over twice as many fights as Hurtado. 47 10 and 1 with 24 KOs. Hurtado's 26 and 1. 18 KOs. Hurtado says in the ring, I'm a boxer, and you see the good movement from him. Tyson says, I'm a scientific fighter. I pick my shots in the ring. More like Marvin Hagler. His best punch electric to the body. And Hurtado says his best punch. Veteran fighters have problems with their speed. And that's one of the best attributes of Hurtado. Hurtado has won six in a row. His last fight, he fought here in Miami, knocked out Elias Cavos in the first round. And prior to that, he fought here in Miami in June and knocked out Leonardo Moss, who you might remember fought the Costa Zoo for the championship last year, and he KO'd him. So he is showing, apparently, Hurtado improved power. Developing power actually as you go along. A lot of people think you're just born with it, you have it or you don't. No, I think it is something that is definitely conditioned into you. And that power has been brought in since this confidence that he's gained. He went into the fight with Pernell Whitaker with a 20 and 0 record, 13 KOs back in January of 1997 before being.
kind of static in my ear or my left ear here is everything sound okay or is that just on this uh, on this thing yeah, static in my left eye <laughs> all right no it was just static i thought maybe i should go to the spare mic or something but you're, you're not hearing static there right okay thank you thank you December of 1994. Artado using that jab. Look at the straight punches from Artado. That's uh, indicative of a good solid amateur training. In combination again. Tyson just taking his time early. He said, in my younger days, I would have wasted. Today, I'm more patient. I use more defense today. I guess the question would be then, Sean, is the fight where he's on is if he's having trouble getting off or if he's just being patient during the fight. You know what? That's what many fighters say when they've reached that point of no return. <laughs> they say, well, you know, I could see the punches. I just couldn't get out of the way of them. I think what fighters lose is their sharpness, their crispness as they age. Daryl Tyson, of course, not old, but he stretched the imagination, 37. But old in athletes, in terms of athletes, athletes mature about 28 years old. Good combination from Hurtado again. Tyson just taking it. Look how Tyson rolling with the punches. Hurtado stepping up in class here tonight from his recent level of opposition. Although, as we mentioned, he did have that great fight against Whitaker, which he scored two knockouts. But certainly tonight against a veteran like Tyson, this is a good, another good experience for him. And Hurtado, it seems, is, is taking advantage of some of his physical advantages that he has. He has his reach and height. He's using that jab, 74-inch reach, and he is connecting with those straight punches. Tyson has to go on the outside. He's going to have to start bobbing and weaving, working his way in, perhaps starting off at the body. Darryl Tyson. Well, how about that? Three. Unbelievable. Four. Tyson hey. out of nowhere. Well, he has caught it. This is an official knockdown. The title was trying to say no knockdown, but that's what happens when you fight a veteran. No doubt that was a knockdown. 
What Daryl Tyson did is he went down low, he moved in, and then he cranked with an overhand right. And well, that changed the complexion completely. So. Well, here's what happened. Look at the little uh, abrasion there on the right cheek of Hurtado. See, good look at that. Here's a look at it again. Watch how Tyson comes in behind that jab. I believe their feet got caught up there, too. Their front feet seem to get caught up. And no, 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 he hit him. He sure Darryl did. Darryl Tyson tagged him. That right hand up high in the head. Yeah. Uh, getting tagged like that from Darryl Tyson, your feet will get caught up. Your own feet. Well, he said what a nice experience this was for Hurtado. And he certainly gained something in that round. A respect, I would think, for the punching power of Daryl Tyson. A pretty significant punch that Tyson landed in the entire fight, John. punches until he got clocked. He's got to get back to what was working on those combinations. You know, this is so indicative of fighters who've had a lot of amateur fights. They come out real strong early in the fight. The fight for these pro veterans like Tyson doesn't begin until after three. Well, we thought this would be an entertaining matchup, and I think it's already more than the people in the Diabellus Hurtado corner thought it would be. That is why you can never count the veterans. Like Tyson, he's fought so many guys. You take a look at his record, Sean. I mean, he's fought everybody along the way. And he's, he's fought a lot of world champions, and he's beaten some good fighters. And he's fought not only the champions, but he's fought for the world title on a couple of occasions. Well, he stopped in two by Oscar De La Hoya, two fights back. Fred Pendleton in face. Roger Mayweather, Livingstone Bramble, Miguel Angel Gonzalez, Terrence Ali. Jab. Shorter man out jabbing the taller man. Plenty of time. Remember how much pressure Tyson was putting in those first two rounds? Pressure like that will pay off late in a fight. Tyson even said, hey, experience is a big factor. I've been through the 10s, 12, and 15 rounders. friend of his from the Washington, D.C. area. Of course, Mark's just a fly rate, but I mean, that's got to improve your timing, I would think, and speed. It really sharpens you up, too. You know, we talked earlier about yes. the first thing that leaves you is your speed. There's a good combination of fast punches from Hodano. Tyson's been working on that speed. He knows how important that is. Valuable. Now, Hodano trying to work down to the body, basically, for the first time tonight. He's been mostly a headhunter. But Tyson has stepped it up himself a little bit in this round. There's half a minute to go in round number three. This is becoming a growingly interesting fight. tonight with someone who's been in there with uh, the number one contender, Miguel Angel Gonzalez. So uh, he is gaining some valuable experience, Hurtado is. Hurtado rocked in that second round, rebounded pretty well in the third, and he is ready to start this fourth round. All right, we're going to round number four. There's a 140-pound weight class. And if you think back to the time when Hurtado fought for the welderweight championship, 
fought for a 147 pound title against Pernell Whitaker. This is his real weight class at 140. Well, way up in weight. You're right how much stronger those foes are when you step up like that, especially in these lower weight divisions. A few pounds here, a few pounds here, there. Very vital in these smaller weight divisions. Heavyweight doesn't seem to matter that much. We are in round four, scheduled for 10. This is a junior welterweight title. The Abellis title, who, as you see, is the fourth ranked WBC ranked contender, taking on veteran contender, perennial contender, Daryl Tyson, who's been in with the best in a long career. And he's making it tough on her title here tonight. Daryl Tyson definitely came to fight. We are at the Mikasuki Indian Gaming Pavilion in Miami, in which Murata, along with Sean O'Grady, don't forget, coming up later on tonight, we have our main event, Michael Nunn returning to the ring after his unsuccessful bid for the WBC Light Heavyweight. And look at her title, ripping off that uh, combination of punches and stopping Tyson in his tracks for the moment. But not really connecting, Rich. He is, yes, he's ripping off the punches, but look at the gloves of Tyson up around his face. He's putting the pressure on. The complexion of the fight is much different here than it was in those first two rounds. In the first two rounds, how Otano was throwing straight combinations, real good punches, effective shots. Not as effective here in this field. Remember what I said about the amateur fighters? After those first three, sometimes they don't have the power that they had in those first three. And just keep the pressure on. That's what Tyson's doing. Stay on him like a like, like water on a rock. Isn't that constant relentless pressure on you of the two hundred thousand? Facing that, if you just got that guy in your face the whole night. You know, in so many of my fights, I was able to move around early in the fight, I'd not get hit with any big shots, and then come back as the fight went on. And I was able to score so many KOs that way. So staying in your opponent's face, making him work. You do this early to pay off late in these kind of matches. Tyson will pick it up even more later in this fight. Daryl Tyson. He was sweat on the back of Montano's back. He is getting a good workout now. Good combination from Montano. That three down and off. Tyson trying to answer back. Daryl Tyson came to win this fight if he could here tonight as we come to the end of round four. Hey, you know what I need is the referee's name. Referee's name. Referee's name. Which, re which ref? Got it. Welcome back to Fight Time on Fox, round five of a junior welterweight 10 rounder between Daryl Tyson, who's in the all white trunks, and Diabellis Rutano in the white trunks with the uh, black trim. One knockdown in the fight so far, that's scored by Daryl Tyson in the second round with a right hand up high in the head. Momentarily stunned Hurtado. Hurtado got up, survived, was near the end of the round. The other two have been back and forth since. Back and forth, but no pressure from Tyson. There's a good hit by Tyson Hurt. Tyson in real trouble here, and he goes down and halfway out the ring. It happened that quickly with Hurtado, who has shown the improved power set we talked about earlier. Seven. And Tyson taking the count on his knee and gets up. No. He's in trouble, How you doing? He is in trouble. Look at him shaking his head. Shaking his head now. Right now is a great opportunity for Otaro. Throw everything you've got. And he's got a lot because he's got a lot of speed. And he's showing more power. Setting down his punches better now than he did earlier in his career. But this ring savvy of Tyson may be able to hang on. That's a second knockdown. 
Kubis is in there. Yeah. Hey, uh, Rick, Rick, Rick Murphy. Rick Murphy. Yeah, I was trying to ask you there was the three knockdown rule in effect after you, when you said that. I couldn't remember if we. Thomas, did he call that third knockdown a knockdown? Is it the three knockdown rule? All right. Yeah. Yes. Throw it. All right, a controversial ending to this fight on the three knockdown rule. Daryl Tyson is stopped by uh, Diabellis Hurtado, but there was question about the last two knockdowns in the mind of Daryl Tyson. But Hurtado is the winner. We'll get the official word now from ring announcer Thomas Driver. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the official time, two minutes, 30 seconds of the fifth round with the three knockdown rule in effect. Referee Jorge Alonso calls a halt to the bout with your winner by technical knockout, Dios Belis Portado. Well, Daryl Tyson very upset. He got right out of the ring, even though Hurtado came over to put an arm around him. As you can see, Tyson already on the way out and back to the locker room. Very upset by the way that the fight finished because he felt that those were not legitimate knockdowns. Well, that first one definitely was. He definitely was down and hurt. And in the end, Hurtado was the winner, and Hurtado is standing by with Sean O'Grady. Sean? Thank you, Rich. The winner, but Diabella, tell me why you think the crowd is uh, so boisterous tonight. Well, you think that the fanáticos are acting in that form? Well, I'm a player of the patio, and I think when the patio is surging, un boxeador que quiere poner el nombre alto, siempre hay que está en contra, siempre hay boxeadores que están en contra. Ese es el fanatismo del boxeo, el mundo del boxeo es así. Because, you know, he knows he's fighting in his backyard, but there's a lot of fans that, you know, want nothing but 100%. And, uh, you know, people are like that. There's, there's critical fans everywhere you go, even in your, in your backyard. 
As we take a look at the first knockdown, I want you to, to look at it. Did he ever hurt you? Él te puso mal a ti cuando te tumbó la primera vez. Me dio un golpe y me cogió mal parado. Solo fue, pero no sentí el efecto de eh, para más. He said, you know, when, the, when, he, when he did hit on me, he, was, he wasn't standing right, and that's the reason he went down. Ven para acá. What, what were you thinking right here? Uh, ¿Qué estaba pensando ahí cuando antes de terminarlo? ¿Qué es lo que estaba pensando? ¿Qué es lo que estaba pensando? Bueno, sabía que, que se podía acabar la pelea en ese momento. Eh, estaba consciente que se podía acabar, que no tenía para resistir más. He says, I knew I could finish a fight any time because I could see he was, you know, worn down from the shots that I was hitting him with. This fight has to give you a lot of confidence in yourself. Where do you go from here? Esta pelea te tiene que dar mucha confianza a ti. ¿Qué es lo que vamos a hacer próximo? ¿Qué es lo que vas a hacer próximo? Bueno, realmente mi carrera en este momento la, la terminan mis manejadores, que son René Gil, Vídeo Cuba, Mini Ben, eh, Tim Freedom, que son los que están en, en cargo de mi carrera. Ellos son los que pueden decir el próximo paso que voy a dar. He says, you know, my career is handled by his manager, René Gill, and me as a promoter with main events, we, you know, we handle uh, his career, and that's what he, what he wants, you know, us to handle it. Okay, thank you, Louis Dacubas. Fine job on the uh, interpretation. Let's go back down to Rich Murata. You know, you've got a kid here in Dibala Sertado. He goes to 27 and 1 with eight with 19 KOs and yep. some good, valuable experience. Yeah, and, that, and the experience of having to get up off of the canvas, Sean, to win a fight. And that uh, eventually will prove helpful, I think, probably to every fighter, although you certainly don't like it at the moment. But there's the winner, Diabella Sertado, the fourth-ranked contender by the WBC.